All right, he was the FBI agent at the very heart of the deep state, and as I have been telling you now for a long time, the biggest corruption, abuse of power scandal, sadly, in our history. Now, in 2016, he was the lead investigator in the Clinton's server probe. He played a lead role in writing Hillary Clinton's exoneration, of course, before the investigation, before ultimately conducting her investigation months later. Despite what we now have, which is incontrovertible evidence that Hillary Clinton was guilty of numerous serious felonies and crimes, he then immediately transitioned to the Trump Russia witch hunt left wing talking point. All the while, he has expressed a massive bias in favor of Hillary Clinton, who he was supposed to be investigating, and an extraordinary, extreme hatred, animus against Donald Trump to his FBI colleague, Mistress Lisa Page. All, by the way, on official FBI phones used to conduct official FBI business. Now, tomorrow, Lisa Page, well, she's set to testify like she was Wednesday before a closed door session in Congress. We'll see. But today, for the very first time in a public setting, yes, Peter Strzok was now forced to begin to answer for his prejudice, his bigoted the point of view before he did an investigation, including, by the way, text and statements like these. Take a look. You want me to read this? Yes, please. Yes, sir. OMG, he's an idiot. Hi, how is Trump other than a douche? Melania? Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. Uh, and I'll preface it by saying this for context. Uh, Ms. Page said, not ever going to become president, right? Right? Uh, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Repeat that again. No, no, he's not. We'll stop it. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way he gets elected, but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. What the F happened to our country, Lise? Okay, read it again that way. I, sir, did you not? Was no, it not I just wanted to hear it You one just want to hear it for yeah. me to repeat it. Please. Okay, sir. Sure. Uh, happy to indulge you. Uh, I can't pull away. What the F happened to our country, Lise? What arrogance, what narcissism will stop it, an insurance policy? Now get this, despite everything you just heard, Peter Strzok actually wants you to dispense of all the common sense that God gave you, and he wants you to spend all logic that you have, all rationale, and believe in this fantasy that his actions were not abusively biased and frankly, in my view, corrupt. Watch this. Let me be clear, unequivocally, and under oath, not once in my 26 years of defending our nation did my personal opinions impact any official action I took. This is true for the Clinton email investigation, for the investigation into Russian interference, and for every other investigation I've worked on. It is not who I am, and it is not something I would ever do, period. I understand that my sworn testimony will not be enough for some people. After all, Americans are skeptical of anything coming out of Washington. But the fact is, after months of investigations, there's simply no evidence of bias in my professional actions. I'd like to know how many lawyers worked on that whole uh, show that you just saw. What you just heard is a national scandal. It is a disgrace. Remember, it was him, Strzok, who called the president an idiot, abysmal, and his girlfriend, Lisa Page, called him loathsome and awful. And Strzok said Hillary Clinton should win the 2016 election 100 million to zero. And Donald Trump is bigoted, an enormous bleep, he's a disaster, he's a bleeping idiot, his presidency is bleeping terrifying. This is just a small sample, by the way, of what are hundreds of anti-Trump texts. Now, Congressman Trey Gowdy, he will be joining us tonight in just a few minutes. He called out this cancerous prejudice and discrimination. Take a look. Agent Strzok, despite the plain language of his text and emails, despite the inspector general's report, and despite common sense, doesn't think he was biased. He thinks calling someone destabilizing for the country isn't bias. He thinks promising to protect the country from someone he hasn't even begun to investigate isn't bias. He has a different set of rules for others that he's investigating. Agent Strzok thinks saying someone he is allegedly investigating should be elected president 100 million to zero before he ever interviews her. 
He doesn't think that's bias. Agent Strzok thinks pronouncing someone innocent before bothering to interview more than 30 different witnesses isn't bias. If we don't get this right, we will lose this country. And of course, Peter Strzok's animus, his hatred towards Donald Trump, it didn't stop with just the president himself. No, it also extended to Trump voters. You know, we, the people, all of us that are irredeemable, deplorables, you know, we Americans that actually believe in God and our Bibles and our religion and believe in the Second Amendment. Take a look at this. Let's People discuss look at a text that hits home for me. On August 26, 2016, you texted Ms. Page, quote, just went to a Southern Virginia Walmart. I could smell the Trump support. And smell is in capital letters, all capital letters. What does Trump support smell like, Mr. Strzok? Sir, that's an expression of speech. I clearly wasn't smelling one thing or the other. What I was commenting on is living in northern Virginia. Well, what does that driving, mean? What I, what I meant by that was living in northern Virginia, having traveled 100 and 150 miles south within the same state, I was struck by the extraordinary difference in the expression of political opinion and belief amongst the community there. And, the, and from you where described I live. that as smell in capital letters. Sir, that was a choice of the quick choice of words and a text. All right. So earlier, seen or well, heard. I, okay. So earlier, you had texted Ms. Page on that another part of Virginia, Loudoun County, which is I think in northern Virginia, is quote still ignorant hillbillies. End quote. Is that what you meant? No, sir. Not at all. That I you consider I'm Trump supporters to be ignorant hillbillies? Not at all. Smelly hillbillies that like Walmart. Now, you follow that exchange. Once again, Peter Strzok asked all of us, the American people, to suspend logic and believe he didn't really say what he was caught texting. Watch one more unbelievable, insane denial. You were both rooting for Hillary Clinton to win, and you both detested Donald Trump. Uh, did you not? I think that's fair to say. Okay. And in fact, as we've learned, you apparently found Donald Trump's supporters detestable, too, like those around Loudoun, Virginia, as we've already heard, whom you uh, called ignorant blanks. I'm not going to uh, say that here. Um, and that you had uh, visited a Southern Virginia Walmart and could smell the Trump support. Don't you think that the American people, when they're paying your salaries, when they're paying for a fair and unbiased investigation by none other than the FBI, deserved a whole lot better uh, than what those comments I just referred to reflect? Congressman, uh, two things. One, I absolutely regret the appearance of some of those texts and wish I would have said or phrased or not said at all some of the things I did. Two, I take, uh, I disagree completely with your attribution to my views of Trump supporters. I never said that. I express no such thing. Now, no intelligent American would believe that denial with more verbal gymnastics than we actually saw. I never thought we could top this former President Bill Clinton. Remember, it all depends what is is. Now, we were alone, but I never really thought we were alone. In order to believe these bizarre explanations from this verbal contortionist, you would literally have to suspend all sense of fact and fiction. And, of course, Peter Strzok, well, he does think that the smelly, irredeemable, deplorable Trump supporters of Walmart, the hillbillies like us that believe in God and guns and Bibles and religion, we don't measure up. He thinks, yeah, I guess we're pretty dumb and he could just do whatever he wants. I have some bad news for Peter. He's not the infallible super patriot that he clearly has convinced himself he is. He lies to our face, and in the end, he's not going to get away with it. In other words, he's not above the law, because the American people saw these lies today. We know a cover-up when we see one. By the way, so did Congressman Louis Gohmert. Take a look at this tense exchange. And you have come in here and said, I had no bias. And you do it with a straight face. And I watched you in the, in the private testimony you gave. And I told some of the other guys, he is really good. He's lying. He knows. We know he's lying. And he could probably pass a polygraph. Gentlemen. No, the disgrace Mr. is Mr. what this man has done. The gentleman from Texas system. will suspend for a there moment. There is the disgrace. 
and it won't be recaptured anytime soon because of the damage you've done to the justice system. And I've talked to FBI agents around the country. You've embarrassed them. You've embarrassed yourself. And I can't help but wonder, when I see you looking there with a little smirk, how many times did you look so innocent into your wife's eye and lie to her about uh, Lisa? Mr. Chairman, this is outrageous. The credibility of a witness Shame is always you, an Chairman. issue. Mr. And you Chairman, please. Have you have you know, Mr. Chairman, this is an intolerable you harassment of the witness. What's wrong with that? You need your medication. It is clear, it is obvious to every American with common sense. Peter Strzok definitely has an unfaithful relationship with the truth. Now, without a doubt, this is the greatest case of cognitive dissonance that I've ever seen in my life. He's out of touch with reality. He thinks only he knows what's right for America. It couldn't be more obvious. The poster child of what we now know is a deep state, thinking he knew better and knows better than we smelly Trump supporters. But predictably, in order to deflect, he used an all too common tactic of the left, launched into some attack, into some of the, quote, extreme folks on TV. And I have a response, just like yours truly. Take a look. I understand why people might think that, particularly based on the misrepresentations of extreme folks in the media, conspiracy theorists, folks in this body and elsewhere. And that's why I'm glad to be here today publicly, why I'm glad to hear that people are calling for the release of my private uh, interview so that people can judge for themselves who I am, what I said, and the facts, and not something that's being spun or misrepresented in some 10 o'clock talk show or, or, or other place. If you don't like the reporting and the truth and the investigations, I have an invitation to Mr. Arrogant One. And by the way, you can bring your girlfriend, Lisa Page, with you. We can do it right to my face. And I'll even offer you, Peter, what I offered your boss, Jim. Three hours of radio on 570 of the best radio stations in America. And right here, thanks to our loyal viewers, the number one show in all of cable news. I'll give you a full hour. I'll tell you what, I'll give you two full hours. We'll run it two days in a row, a two-day extravaganza. If your track record is so impeccable and you really haven't done anything wrong, you're welcome. Two hours and three on radio. Come and defend yourself. I'm not going to hold my breath. And believe it or not, in addition to Strzok's obfuscation, he actually confirmed a very important piece of information about the deep state. This is something we have been telling you about for months. As Strzok admitted, Christopher Steele's dirty dossier was in fact supplied to the FBI by Bruce Orr. Remember, Orr was the high-ranking Justice Department official during the Obama administration. He was married to Nellie Orr. She worked for Fusion GPS, who worked closely, yes, with the foreign national Christopher Steele, who sold us Russian lies to influence the election. Watch this. You said you did not personally receive documents from Mr. Orr, but the FBI did. Is that That's correct? That's correct. And you also said the FBI got documents from a different source in mid-September. Different uh, source than whom? A different source from Mr. Orr. It was not Mr. Orr who provided the initial documents that I became aware of in mid-September. So Mr. Orr did not hand you the dossier? That's Mr. Orr didn't hand me anything. Mr. FBI. Orr provided information to the FBI that included material that is what everybody's calling the dossier. Reporting wait, wait, wait. Say, from Mr. Steele. Say that again. Say that sentence again. Mr. Orr provided what? He provided some elements of reporting that, uh, my understanding, is originated from Mr. Steele. So, Mr. so Bruce Orr did give the FBI information relative to the dossier? Yes. Bought and paid for foreign national put together Russian lies to influence the election. A perfect example of the deep state working together to use a piece of what Clinton paid for, the Russian lies. Yeah, all to impact and influence an election, a presidential election. This is a massive abuse of power scandal. Everything we have been saying is right. We're going to have a lot more on this all throughout the show. But first, I want to end our monologue tonight with a message directly to Peter Strzok. Just so you know, I love law enforcement, Peter. My mom worked as a prison guard for about 25 years of her life. She worked more 16-hour shifts than I could ever add up or recall. My father, a family court officer. Many relatives who worked in law enforcement, including the NYPD. Two who made it to the tippy top that worked for that organization that I have so much respect for, the FBI. They were revered in my family. Now, today you told the American people not to believe your own words, their clear meaning. You tried to cover up your bias. You took no ownership 
of your terrible and despicable actions. Mr. Strzok, you are not the 99.9% .9 of law enforcement in this country that serve and protect us. Nor was your girlfriend Lisa, nor was your boss Jim, or Deputy FBI Director McCabe. What you are is a partisan political hack, and you abuse the trust and the power that we, the smelly people of the United States that like Walmart, gave to you. The people that work hard every single day, contribute to the society, make it better, play by the rules, pay their taxes, use their salary, obey the laws, get taxed into oblivion by corrupt government, the people who struggle to make ends meet, the ones that you have shown nothing but contempt and hatred for, and the ones you think you're superior to. And if your chosen candidate, your beloved Hillary, had won, none of this corruption would have come to light. Now the deep state, your days are numbered, and we smelly Trump supporters, and I'm one, I'm an irredeemable deplorable, we will not rest, and all of your deep state colleagues until they are held accountable for what you've done here. 